now you, uh, in 1976, became involved in a, a very honored production, Eleanor and Franklin. Yes. Again, a, actually, there was a sequel to it as well, Eleanor Franklin, The White House. Years, right. Both right. of which were mm -hmm. rewarded with a lot of Emmys. Yes. Uh, tell us about that. What did you have to do for uh, Eleanor and Franklin? Be true to history was one thing we had to do. You had to cover a lot of history. Oh, we did. We covered a lot of history, and uh, a lot of it was location. I did have two stages at Fox. <clears throat> I had to build uh, the entire third floor of the White House, uh, which was uh, the, the living quarters where you start with the big fan window. Uh, the corridor was 110 feet long. It went by into the living, uh, sitting room area, past the Lincoln bedroom and the other bedrooms, and on down to, in that particular time, the Oval Office was in the White House. The Oval Office is not any longer in the White House. It's down in the executive wing of the White House. Uh, it had to be, you know, Dan Petrie, and I decided we better make everything as true as possible architecturally because not that people are allowed up there on that floor anymore, ever. You can't go into the living quarters unless you're a friend, you know, of the reigning president. Well, family. he was selling some of those recently. Yeah, right. <laughs> those quarters. But, but uh, so I, I had to find plans of what this White House looked like in the FDR period. Now, the house, the plan, the house plans of the White House are not available. I did. I went to the Library of Congress. I went to the archives. Uh, one librarian I talked to and told her what we were doing. We all had to. We all were crawling all over the, the files, you know, in the other buildings, trying to find information, news, photos of the time, war photos, family photos. Uh, we had to talk our way in. So I talked to one librarian, and I told her what I was having to do. And she says, we don't, we cannot tell you where the plans are, but I'll give you an idea. There was a magazine in that day called Look. And in that Look magazine, are some plans of the White House during Franklin's office. And if you fi can find a copy of that, and I think maybe our library might have a copy, then you could blow it up, do anything you want to with it. So I got down and told Dan, we went out and bought as many copies as we could, you know, back issues. And sure enough, it was there. I just blew it up, and then I elbowed my way in as a tourist uh, and got the full look of what it was today. It hadn't changed much from the, the first floor, and the staircase hasn't changed any, and the elevator hasn't changed any going up to that floor. So I was in the Roosevelt uh, years. We had been out on location shooting uh, the funeral train. After Roosevelt had died, there was a yes. funeral train, we should explain. And the, uh, the train that I used uh, was under the jurisdiction of a friend of my father's, Southern Railroad. And I called this gentleman and told him that I needed, because he did have a, a line that we could use, a trackage that is, and I said, we're going to be shooting in Keysville, Virginia. I've got to turn that into Warm Springs. Oh, he says, that's no problem. Um, I'll send down my office car, and you people can use that for your base. And uh, he said, now, to get uh, FDR on the body, the casket, on the Pullman car, and we can't use an office car because it wouldn't be room. We'll take a, a Pullman car and we'll take the window out for you. And you, you'll have to build a ramp up to the level of the sill of the window so that this crew, these soldiers and Marines, can take the casket up and then 
you'll have to put on another officer group to receive the casket and to take it in and put it in the center on the catafalque. The train we used, uh, interesting enough, the locomotive was a sister locomotive of the locomotive that pulled the actual general train. General train. Uh, and it traveled on the same line because Warm Springs was not far from Keysville, Virginia. And it passed by, it, it traveled at night. It was, it was draped in dark velvet, purple velvet and black. So it was an actual funeral train in look. Uh, the lights were on in the car where the casket was all night. So it passed through these switching towns, as we call them, and uh, people knew it was coming. So it crowds at the at the tracks, and sometimes it was raining. It was traveling very slowly. Uh, they cleared the the log sheets cleared all of the trains, knowing it was coming. So it never had to go into a siding. If it had to stop for fuel or to change crews, or check brakes. There was always a crowd there until it was taken into Grand Central Station in Washington. And uh, the famous scene of going through a little town where there was a hotel with the typical wraparound porch and people singing and crying, and the uh, black man with the accordion is out playing and the tears rolling down his is a famous Stole news photo. Photograph yeah. Petrie copied that completely, had the right attitude, uh, the right face, and the people, the singers around him. It was a very touching scene.